At the end of Elden Ring, we come across a mysterious and controversial figure. Our final test and fight at first appears to be with Radagon of the Golden Order, the other side of Queen Merica, and a figure foretold throughout the game. With the very first moments of the game introducing Merica and Radagon hammering away at the Elden Ring, it would be fitting for the game to end with them as well. But it does not. For when we defeat Radagon, the Elden Ring at his core fades and blackness oozes out. From this mire arises an arm that swallows the red-haired hero into the depths. And then, out comes the amorphous, celestial slug of purple and gold. The true final boss of the game, the Elden Beast. As we delve into what little lore there is about this beast, we may find more questions than answers. What I discussed about the Elden Beast in my Outer Gods video concerning it and the Greater Will covered much of the explicit in-game references to it. And speaking of my other videos, feel free to subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with all of my lore and Elden Ring content. Despite it being the final boss, the Elden Beast is hardly mentioned or referenced before the fight. The only explicit reference that I know of comes from the Elden Star's incantation, found in the deep root depths, below the Erd Tree. It reads, It is said that long ago, the Greater Will sent a golden star bearing a beast into the lands between, which would later become the Elden Ring. From this and what we will see later, we learn that the Elden Beast is basically a guard dog for the Greater Will, the outer god at the head of the Golden Order and it serves to enact the Greater Will's plans and machinations in the Lands Between. The Greater Will sent the Elden Beast and Elden Ring to the Lands Between at some point long ago. The Elden Beast was meant to ensure that the Elden Ring operated according to the Greater Will's desires. After we fight and defeat the Beast, we obtain its Elden Remembrance, which gives us slightly more insight, describing the creature as the vassal beast of the Greater Will, and the living incarnation of the concept of order. A vassal is a person or country in a subordinate position to another. A vassal state is under the control of another country, and a vassal individual could be, for instance, a knight who serves a king and receives certain privileges, such as land. So in understanding the Elden Beast as a vassal to the greater will, it is a beast of servitude. And being a beast likely doesn't get any reward or privilege. From this, we see that it acts completely at the behest of the greater will. We also learn from the Remembrance that it serves an important metaphysical role in the Lands Between. It is not just the guard dog of the ring, it is also the living incarnation of the concept of order. If something is an incarnation, it is a thing or concept embodied in flesh or matter, coming from the Latin incarnare, with in being into, and caro or carne being flesh or meat, incarnation being literally translated into flesh. It is a word often used in religious contexts, such as in Christianity, where Jesus is referred to as God incarnate or made flesh on the earth. With the Elden Beast as Order Incarnate, we see a parallel from a real-world religion to the in-game religion of the Greater Will, which is founded in and on order. It is called the Golden Order after all. So the Elden Beast is a watchdog of the Elden Ring, and it is also the embodied manifestation of order in the world. It serves as some kind of anchor point if we think of order as something which permeates the land. Though with the state that we find the lands between in, it seems that the permeating order is not achieving much net good. This raises another question to be asked. How does our understanding of order and the Elden Beast change when we consider the position of the greater will, especially in context of such a destroyed world? In the round table hold, Enya tries to convince us that the greater will has not abandoned the realm, nor the life that inhabits it. But I don't think this is actually the case. In promotional material for the game that is still up on Bandai Namco's site, the war that preceded the events of the game, the Shattering, is called, quote, a war that meant abandonment by the greater will. And the Golden Order is described as, quote, broken. But before you get on my case that promotional material may not necessarily be canon, we can look in-game for evidence as well. In-game, after the player is spurned by the Erd Tree, the two fingers are still and silent, and they remain that way for the rest of the game. Enya says that they are in communication with the Greater Will, But thousands, if not tens of thousands, of moons must first pass. Sounds like quite a while to wait before we can make a judgment. In all likelihood, the Greater Will has cut off contact with the fingers, and we know the fingers are also referred to as vassals just like the Elden Beast. 
So if the greater will isn't talking to the fingers, it likely isn't talking to the big blob either. With such an abandonment, where does that leave the Elden Beast, the guard dog without a master? The Elden Beast is both without guidance from the greater will and suffering from the breaking of the Golden Order. In another confirmation of that earlier promo material, when we fight the Elden Beast, we can notice cracks on its belly before we land a single blow. Now we might be able to say that this is from our fight with Radagon, but I think it's a reasonable conclusion that the Elden Beast, being an incarnation of order, would bear the mark of the order being broken. We do also know from the Mending Rune of Perfect Order that the current Golden Order contains imperfection. That may not be a direct reference to this breaking, but all of this seems connected to me in a way that lets us say, fairly uncontroversially, that the Golden Order is indeed in a broken state during the events of the game. Plus, to not forget the most obvious point, the Elden Ring was shattered. The Elden Beast bears close connection to the ring, so it bearing a mark of the shattering makes sense. So, painting the fullest picture we can of the context around the Elden Beast shows us that it is a now abandoned vassal of the Greater Will, which exists to protect the Elden Ring. The shattering and breaking of the Golden Order has left it broken as well, and that is how we find it in the final fight of the game. Its environment is a mirror of itself, a contrast of celestial bodies foregrounded by the golden light of many in Erdtree. Perhaps these are Erdtrees of other worlds, or simply a glimpse into the power of the Greater Will. The Elden Beast itself seems to house stars and space in its gelatinous flesh, but its core is made of a skeletal nervous system of gold tendrils almost like roots. It has arms, but with its fin-like wings, moves like a primordial fish or slug early in the road of terrestrial evolution. Its long neck capsizes in a head with a seemingly prominent star, maybe the area in space from which it originally came. The gold and purple give the beast a regal tone, which is odd for something that looks so vehemently alien. Its soundtrack with heavenly choruses and harp-like strums adds to this lordly theme. The Elden Beast makes use of a number of attacks that deal holy damage, and it also holds resistance against such kind of damage too. It is set up to be the earthly head or anchor of the religion of Golden Order, but its form never ceases to remind us that it is alien. It creates a juxtaposition with a foreign alien as head of such an earthly or lands betweeny religion, faith, and system of belief. In this way, the themes of the Elden Beast stand out to us, and I have no doubt that this is what From Software intended with its design. In these ways, it succeeds. But at the same time, this sudden onslaught of otherness, the stark alien form that we have not been prepared for in the slightest, leaves, I think, a feeling of confusion and a thematic break in what is the game's ultimate fight. Despite its centrality to the Order and the world of the Lands Between, we know essentially nothing of the Elden Beast before the fight. Most players will not have even been aware of its existence in any capacity before they defeat Radagon. This is not the case for Radagon himself, for he is referenced numerous times in-game, especially through his connections to other people and aspects of the world. Merica gets a smaller showing, but we learn of her before the fight as well, from statues and dialogue from Melina. While for many of the bosses in the game, we learn the pivotal aspects of their stories after our fights with them, we generally come into their battles with some knowledge and some lead up, even if it's just their world zone. This lets us more readily appreciate their fights and the context around them. It gives each fight that aspect of story and of the broader picture. The Elden Beast comes out of left field because the lead up is not to it but to Radagon and Merica. Even the zone we fight the Elden Beast in is not prefaced by a respective area. It is some magical transformation of, or teleportation from, the broken stone at the center of the Erd Tree. It does create a novel spectacle for the fight, but it's something we come to with absolutely no context. From Software obviously likes mystery, and it's part of their style of storytelling, but the complete lack of foreshadowing or introduction or context of the beast leaves the final fight of the game disjointed. Looking at another case from From's catalog in Bloodborne, and spoiler warning for the final boss of Bloodborne, we come across a similar godly alien entity for a final fight, but it actually only appears in a secret ending that the player has to actively seek out. It's not necessary or the default like the Elden Beast. And the being we fight, the Moon Presence, is given much more context by being a member of the Great Ones, a race of entities we encounter elsewhere in the game of Bloodborne, both in references impact on the game world, and in actual gameplay. 
Whereas we are primed for the Lovecraftian horror fight in Bloodborne, the similar otherworldly alien end in Elden Ring feels out of place. Now the grounds were there for it to have been prepared for better. After all, the Elden Beast is an integral part of Order and the influence of the Greater Will and Elden Ring in the lands between. We see this through the similarities found between the Elden Beast and other creatures of old power in the game. The yellow flame that constitutes some of the Elden Beast's attacks seem to be the same kind of fire as we find fighting with Dragonlord Placidusix and against the Ulcerated Tree Spirits. Both of these creatures are closely connected with old power in the lands between, especially the power of the Erd Tree and of previous cycles of Elden Lordship, as we read from his remembrance that Placidusix was once an Elden Lord. The Elden Beast also seems to use an attack similar to Elden Stars, which beyond just giving us some backstory about the beast, also reads, This legendary incantation is the most ancient of those that derive from the Erd Tree. With what I talked about in my video about the Primordial Crucible, it is likely that the Erd Tree grew upon or on top of some older Great Tree or some other form of the original form of life in the Lands Between, the Crucible. Here we learn that in the Erd Tree's early stages, the first incantation which was derived from it was Elden Stars, which is essentially a signature attack of the Elden Beast. With these kinds of traces of the Beast in the Lands Between, it would have made sense to have more instances that show off this influence even if they're shown only under the surface. If the Elden Beast is the incarnation of order, which has been around since ancient times, it would make sense for it to have left more tracks of its existence as marks in the world. This could have thematically set up the fight well as a more ancient and cryptic fight to follow after Radagon, something we have less of an idea about, something which connects to an older aspect of the world than Radagon, and as such is more suited for the final fight and something which we have a bit of a bearing for, still shrouded in mystery to make for a kind of surprise final fight that still has the impact of the Elden Beast fight, but something that we come to, as I said, with a bit more of a bearing. But with the lore as it is, we can only find any kind of idea of this with fairly deep research that almost certainly has to take place long after our fight, thus diminishing the actual fight experience since it lacks any of this context. The Elden Beast is a majestic and overwhelmingly thematic opponent, but, and without marring this video with a discussion on the gameplay mechanics of the fight, it still stands out as too disjointed of a final fight from a lore perspective, at least in my opinion it does. The Beast itself is interesting and one of our strongest links to the ominous Outer Gods, but like them, the loose ends and vague illusions outnumber the confirmable facts to an overwhelming degree. But unlike the Outer Gods, the Elden Beast is actually featured in-game, which makes its lack of concrete lore more frustrating. I've tried to say everything certain there is to say about the Beast, and I've digressed into a more meta discussion of how it fits into the story, but any full explanation of the Beast likely has to include some kind of similar detour. The Elden Beast proved to be one of the more fruitless searches of game lore, at least in terms of concrete facts, but was still an intriguing avenue to learn more about the world and the game. As I continue the search for lore and answers in Elden Ring, you can support the search and channel by becoming a patron on Patreon. Doing so helps me devote more time and resources to these videos, plus you get some perks like seeing video scripts early. You can also subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with video and community posting, and if there's anything I missed or an inference that I made that you found faulty, let me know in the comments. Also feel free to let me know your thoughts on the Golden Alien Beast. With that, thank you for watching, peace.